And the planned closure of TY Point aluminium smelter presents a huge opportunity, according to Russell Norman from Greenpeace. But maximising that could cost the government a billion dollars and initially thousands of jobs. The Manapuri Hydro Power Station feeds the smelter that gobbles up about 13% of the country's power supply. And the company's already given notice it's quitting that power contract. A little earlier, I spoke to Greenpeace Executive Director Russell Norman. He says the news isn't all bad. It certainly is a tough day for the people in Southland and I'm sure the government will be very focused on supporting them through this change. Um, but on, on the other side, it certainly means that there will be a huge amount of cheap renewable electricity uh, available for the rest of New Zealand um, that can drive the electrification of transport and industrial processes that um, will reduce our emissions and also reduce a lot of the costs on New Zealand in terms of importing transport energy. It's only cheap if they can get it to the rest of the country, and that's not possible right now, is it? Transpower have already um, had approved uh, the line upgrade that they need down there. Um, so they've said, you know, it would take Transpower probably three summers to build it, but they can accelerate that process. Um, and obviously, given um, the situation, I'm sure Transpower will be looking at accelerating that process. So um, maybe we can't get it up right now, but it won't be very long before we can. So, yeah, at least three summers, so to to finish the first part of the project, and then there are upgrades required around uh, cables from the south to the North Island, and the potential total cost is up to $600 million, and all the work could take seven years. So cheap powers are way, way off, isn't it? Um, no, not necessarily, because the first piece of work um, can happen reasonably quickly, um, and then the Cook Strait cable upgrades. Uh, the Cook Strait cable won't be maxed out all the time. Um, obviously, it'll be maxed out potentially sometimes, and then we need to look at what the upgrades look like. Um, but there's still plenty of opportunity to get power up to the North Island. So, in terms of getting all of that work done, do you reckon the government should kick in some money to make it happen faster? Definitely. I mean, when you, when you think about the economic opportunities for New Zealand, I mean, you know, think about, you know, we're spending, what, 5 to $8 billion a year to import transport energy for all the oil for our transport fleet. If we accelerate the electrification of transport, not only do we cut our emissions dramatically, uh, but we cut the cost of importing all that transport energy because effectively we'd be creating our own. So it's, a, it's really an incredible opportunity for the broader New Zealand economy. And then beyond transport, you've got the electrification of industrial processes, all those Fonterra drying units that are being run on coal currently across the South Island. I mean, surely that's first cab off the rank um, in terms of electrifying those, so reducing our greenhouse emissions. We're also underlining and supporting the Fonterra brand, which is trying to sell to the world as clean and green. Um, if it's using renewable electricity, then that's great for industries like Fonterra. OK, so what's that worth to us then? What should, what should the government be putting into making this happen? How much? Uh, well, if you think that it means we don't have to pay around $800 million in subsidies under the emissions trading scheme, which we're currently slated to do um, for um, TY through to 2030, so that's already freeing up $800 million that we're going to be used to subsidise TY. And then on top of that, um, I think that there's such enormous benefits across the rest of the economy that it's worth investing in the transmission upgrades so that we get those broader um, economy-wide benefits. So it's a significant cost, but it's so what also potentially a, very a billion potentially benefit. a billion dollars? Do you think, Russell? It it could potentially be. I mean, would you know? And you think that's worth it? It's definitely worth it in terms of the broader costs, uh, the broader benefits of the New Zealand economy because not only are we decarbonising, which obviously we need to do, um, but also we're reducing our dependence on imported transport energy, which is an enormous expense for the country at the moment. 2,600 jobs. So what replacement jobs would you recommend? Some of the green jobs that have been touted at the moment are killing wallabies, pulling wilding plines and planting along waterways. And a lot of these jobs at TY are skilled jobs with good money. So what could we replace them with? What's your best ideas here? Look, I think in the first instance, um, what you've got to look at is that this means cheaper power across the whole of the New Zealand economy. Um, remember, 
um, and, you know, contact her on public record or saying they give cheap power to the smelter in order to, to for the broader market-wide effects, which means pushing up prices for the rest of us. Uh, so the, the effect of having cheaper electricity across the whole economy will have broad economy-wide benefits, um, and that's going to produce jobs um, in many different places. So That takes time, the, though, the, and essentially in a year you've got at least 2,600 people without a job. So in the immediate short term, what are the green jobs that we could um, push these people towards? I think in the immediate short term, a shock like uh, this of TY pulling out, um, in, in you know, it's 900 or 1,000 direct jobs. Um, I think that it's going to be very hard to produce 900 to 1,000 well-paid jobs in 12 months in Southland. I mean, that's just the reality of when a big multinational company like this pulls the plug. Um, the government's going to scramble to try to come and support it, but it's not going to happen straight away in whatever the flavour of the government or whatever its ambitions. There is so that's the cost of shop. going green then? It's not the cost of going green, it's the cost of being dependent on one very large multinational that's decided to pull the pin. I mean, Rio Tinto have made this decision, and in spite of being given $30 million by John Key's government, in spite of getting sweetheart deals on the electricity by two of our major electricity providers, um, they're the ones that are pulling the pin. It's not the government of the day that's done it, it's Rio Tinto. In terms of the plant, there is the issue of contamination and dross, so what are we talking about in terms of a clean-up, do you know? Well, I mean, obviously there's court action at the moment where Environmental Defence Society are seeking a declaratory judgment um, as to the responsibility for the UVO premix, which is this toxic um, waste material that's currently stored in Matoda. Um, and so that's quite a significant liability. And so, we're, you know, I, I think the, the responsibility lies on Rio Tinto to clean that up. And then there's the remediation of the site itself down in Bluff, um, and that will be a very significant job because obviously they've been there a long time. We know there's a lot of contaminated soil down there, um, so Rio Tinto's other job is to clean up that one. Yeah, the Energy Minister says it's estimated that it will cost around $256 million for that. Do you have any fears that they'll just want to shut up shop and walk away? It's certainly been our experience with oil companies um, is that they've walked away and left the taxpayer holding the bill for the clean-up, as we've seen off um, Taranaki in recent years. So, yeah, that is a genuine risk, is that Rio Tinto will leave us with the bill, and I'm sure the government will be looking at every option they can. I mean, it only goes points to the fact that, you know, when you have big companies like this, you need to make sure that there are large bonds in place before they operate that can cover the remediation and clean up afterwards. And that is Russell Norman from Greenpeace.